This is Manchester Voices, a podcast run by students at the University of Manchester. Hey everyone, happy Pride Month! Happy Pride. Very exciting! Yay. Today I have a lovely group of people and we are going to talk a bit about being queer and a bit about living life in Manchester. My name is Maddie, I am a third year about to graduate drama and film student. Bet you didn't see an arts <laughs> degree coming out of me. And I'll go over to my left. Yeah, so my name's Issa, um, I've just finished my first year in environmental science. Ooh. And yeah, I'm enjoying Manchester very much. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, I'm Ray. I uh, just finished second year of my undergraduate archaeology degree. Yes. And I like bones, probably. Yes. <laughs> love and, that. And love bones. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Chris, and I'm finally dragging myself towards the end of my third year of my PhD in Ooh. planning and environmental management. Congratulations. Ooh. Thank you. Well, I've not got that yet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Three congratulations. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Lovely. So we'll just jump right in and we will start with how do you feel living in Manchester as a member of the LGBTQ plus community? And anyone is free to free to hop in. Personally, I really enjoy living in Manchester. I think it's very accepting of the city compared to a lot of other places. There is literally a whole section of the city dedicated to being gay. So (laughs) we love that. The whole gay village scene, like and just generally I feel like people are like used to it here compared Mm. to a lot of the places I've been in the UK I feel like walking down the street people don't turn their heads as much as other cities in the UK is that different from from where you grew up yeah definitely Mm. where I grew up it was definitely a thing if you like if there was two men holding hands walking down the street everyone would gawk it yeah. was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I <laughs> the, 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 the same situation. Like, um, I didn't expect Manchester to be so, like, normal about it. Mm. Like, Liverpool's not so different. It's just that where I grew up specifically, obviously, being in high school, it's like, if you were even slightly different, then it would be like, let's make fun of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... <sighs> Just like being in year seven and being asked inappropriate questions like, are you a lesbian? And <laughs> like, have you gotten the surgery yet? And I'm like, oh, I, no. I d- no. No. But <laughs> year seven. In oh, goodness. People have, I've, I've, there's been worse <laughs> things said to me in year seven yeah. in maths class, but I won't go into that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think everyone in Manchester is a lot more normal and accepting about it. That's good. I mean, I'm from Manchester mm-hmm. originally. Amazing. Like, so it's in my life because i'm a little bit older than Mm. the three of you it has changed a lot but it's something that i certainly noticed looking back 20 years when i was sort of first going out on the scene and how you'd feel traveling home versus how now you know the number of gay people the number of queer people the number you know just around Mm. the city it feels you know even compared to you know that short short time ago mm. <laughs> it feels like a completely different place mm-hmm. so i can imagine if you come from somewhere where that's not yeah. necessarily the everyday experience it can be quite mm. you know quite surprising yeah absolutely um, i mean it's something that i really li- i've lived other places i lived in london for 10 years like it's it's something i really like about living here yeah that you know if me and my husband go to the theater or go to you know go to a restaurant or go you know together mm. nobody bats an eyelid at mm. it and yeah. that's something that's just really you know feels really special absolutely yeah. i think it's it's been quite similar um i'm from the us if you couldn't hear it <laughs> um and i think it, it's been quite similar i think i also <laughs> drama and film um a lot of the art subjects are very queer coded in their inception so i think i think a lot of the people i spend around a lot of time with are queer and it's it's so nice and i think that's so different from kind of the high school that i grew up in it's different like the states and i grew up in a really um wonderful town and a lot of there was a lot of pride in pride um (laughs) but it it is nice to see it not necessarily be like this thing put up on a pedestal of like yes queer woman and it's just kind of like yeah that's maddie (laughs) yeah that's like my friend um so it's nice to have it it's more ingrained in i think manchester culture yeah it's just it's 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 normal no one's gonna like really like bat an eye like when i when i was first like obviously like i moved here um i was a lot more scared to like hold my partner's hand and stuff like that Mm. obviously because of how i grew up um but like again, yeah, no, no one, no one cares. It's, it's just, 
that. Yeah, it's yeah. just how it is, yeah. which is so nice. I think especially because there's a lot of, like, it, there's a high population of LGBT yeah. individuals mm. in Manchester. Like, I feel like every second person I meet, like, is, is yeah. gay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is Manchester the new Brighton? Let's discuss. <laughs> I think that's yeah. what helps with it. Like, you're worried about someone looking at you because you're holding hands with your partner and things. But mm. then half the time you realise that they walk over to the other side of the street and hold hands with their partner. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's all a bit of perception, really. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Well, I will j- kind of jump into the next question. Um, obviously, we've had different experiences, and it seems like generally Manchester has been a really nice place. Do you guys have any advice or kind of ideas for support on how to receive any well being support? Have you had to go through that or experience that? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say, like, particularly at the university, mm. there is a really good network of support for this kind of thing. Like, the there's the advice centre in the SU, um, and it's something they take, like, really seriously in, like, yeah. policies and things like that. And, like, they do a lot of work for it as well. Like, um, I know the SU recently put in that the fund for trans people to mm. get the, the gender equipment. expression fund. The gender expression yes. fund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about that. It's absolutely fantastic. I've yeah. used it three times now. I could I I I I don't want to talk over you, but it's no, 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 do talk, <laughs> talk about <laughs> it. But, oh, wait. but um, it's like I I, I mention it to everyone that uh, I, I talk to. Um, me and my partner use it. I, I get like I've said, I've used it three times now. You can get up to a hundred pounds um each time uh, and you can use it to for, for f- uh things like clothes or, wow. or medication or like what I did um. I've just legally changed my name and they helped me uh, like pay for that. Yay. Congratulations! Yay. Transgender win! Yes! Um, they just helped me pay for that because that's kind of expensive and yeah. then we also paid for like 10 months of uh, worth of um, of my like, testosterone medication wow. and a new binder. So it, it's, it's really like really fantastic. Um, I don't think they're doing... Uh, it's closed over the summer but the coming back next next year like hopefully even better incredible it's just a r- really good fund yeah amazing no i definitely yeah. think they, they do a lot of the university for it um like i know they've sent out things where they're paying for p- some people's tickets to pride really? like because tickets to pride oh. are expensive they're like 60 quid but i saw like on the media the other day or something that they were saying that if you sign up like if you wear like one of the manchester shirts and go with like the su they'll pay for your ticket and to the Manchester Pride in August, so I'd they like are to, really might need to jump on that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you should, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I think this is quite a random thing, um, and it wasn't really until I went home mm. that I noticed this. But almost every bathroom on campus is like just f- like for whoever, and mm. especially in the SU, like everyone just goes into every bathroom, and I love that. I love it. I find it so much fun. And then I went home, and I was kind of like oh this is like weird that everything is like it just it feels odd but i think that's it's such a nice integration of just everyone's got to use the bathroom yeah no i I love the su with like that has the like gender neutral bathrooms yeah it's so much better and it really disappointed me the other day the government legislation they brought in about Mm. the did you hear that about the bathrooms (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah i can't handle it lately I yeah. know. They put in a new legislation the other day that all new buildings have to have separate male and female bathrooms, s- which is it's terrible. It's so boring. Yeah. yeah. I tomato, think tomato, tomato, tomato. That oh, is one nice thing about like the SU is I think they, you can tell that there's people on the team at mm. the SU who are queer and are like mm. living a very similar experience yeah. to the ones that the students are living. So it feels it feels quite comfortable. Mm. I haven't I've been very fortunate. I haven't had to use like um, necessarily a lot of like support systems. Mm. But every time I've reached out to the uni or like the advice service, Mm -hmm. I've been greeted with welcome arms. And like they're just so lovely. And it's a really nice team that Mm. I've had Mm -hmm. the opportunity to work with. Yeah. I mean, outside the uni as well, one of the things we were talking about before, that Manchester is quite a big city and it has a large LGBT plus community oh yeah and so it has quite a lot of services tailored for lgbt people just living Mm. in the community so i've got friends who've been studying here who've accessed counseling services through the lgbt Mm. foundation yeah or who've accessed um um uh, sexual health services through the um well through the various sexual health services or um judge house trust which is an hiv charity who do a lot of who just based in ardwick who do a lot of work um, both with sort of sexual health um testing um, but also in communities affected by HIV. Yeah. Kind of, there's wow. a lot going on that you wouldn't necessarily get in a smaller city because 
that that kind of there is a need for that kind of service, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's bad. I mean, yeah. we were all sort of saying, oh, Manchester's great, Manchester's great. But the reason these things exist is because it's a big city and big cities yeah. have problems. Mm. But at the same time, it's really good that those services <laughs> 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 exist um, because, you know, it gives, you know, mm. people who live here and study here and work here an opportunity um, to, you know, to access something that's tailored yeah. to them and that really can help Absolutely. them in different yeah. ways. 100%. I definitely second that. I know in the city, the sexual health services, especially for LGBT people, are, like, outstanding mm. compared to a lot of other places. Like, mm. I've, like, known friends who have needed to use those services. Um, they've been through, like, trauma and things like that. And, like, they've been amazing. Like, the services, t like, in helping them, um, like, in specific, like, LGBT situations, basically. Mm. I think that's like such a such a good segue into one of the questions, which is um, about the societies and spaces that you feel most comfortable in, um, whether that's in the city, at uni. I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I can start with a big one. We love Gay Village. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is a podcast for the students, not for the parents. <laughs> we love a nice night out. Um, yeah, I, I always have a good time boogieing. Tonight, um, there's uh, Bar Pop. If you guys know Bar Pop, I'm going to a show. And it's like a little student show. There's not a budget to it, but we're going up to Edinburgh Fringe. And the, the Bar Pop was just like, yeah, come perform. Like, come and do it. And it's about it's like a, it's a woman-woman show about yeah. being queer and living in Manchester. And Bar Pop is just like, yeah, we'll fund it. Come on in. That's like, come and do your show here. So cool. And I think that's so cool. Like, both, it's a win for yeah. win for women, a win for the community. But also, I think it's really cool that, like, just students can be like, yeah, I want to do a show and I want to do it here. Which is cool. Yeah. No, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Anti Heroin. Um, but oh, it's it's cool that Bar Pop mm. is just like, yeah, yeah, come and do it. Like the Taylor Swift song. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That was my next question. Is <laughs> everyone's <laughs> favorite Taylor Swift song? I don't like Taylor Swift. I don't like Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's no, a controversial no, thing to say, <laughs> but um, I'll revert us back to the question so we don't get into a fight. <laughs> um, yeah, spaces, societies, clubs. Um, well, definitely Gay Village, I'd say, and mm. the university region itself. Mm. I personally would say the more central you go to the city, the more accepting and like the the more wider range activities you find i yeah. feel like on the outskirts of the city that's where i would feel more uncomfortable mm. um when you get like those communities that are a bit more isolated and things like that yeah like if i was to travel out maybe up to bolton or like further out to the edges of salford or didsbury yeah. i feel those are the places that i'd feel more wary about what i'm doing yeah. and things like that changes yeah absolutely yeah. I, I, I agree with that i mean like I, I also don't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I do feel more comfortable to be myself more in like city center, whereas if you were to go farther away, it's it, that's when like holding someone else's hand is a little bit more like uncomfortable and you need to be. Yeah. But gay village, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I remember when uh, there were the uh, vigils for Brianna Gay. Mm. Um, held at like Sackville Gardens and I think that was like a really like, beautiful moment and like sense of like community yeah. which I, I really appreciated but yeah. besides that I don't really do <laughs> 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 I mean I live in Didsbury uh, okay. and I've lived there for about God, eight years now Wow, we're finally decorating our house <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but and where I live I don't think there's any like I don't see there's any problem at all yeah um like it's kind of the same as you get in the city center i think sort of west didsbury chorlton um various places down yeah. in, in south manchester have got that molly range as well has got mm. that quite um sort of accepting inclusive you know it's very expensive but yeah, yeah. it's it's you know it, it's very well you know it feels safe mm. i suppose yeah. that's the best way of putting it and there's lots of lots of events and things that happen down there you know for people who aren't in the university for people who yeah. you know, sort of stayed around and you know live you know in their 20s and 30s and whatever that tend to happen more in well in the city center but also in south manchester suburbs yeah. as well um, because that's where people you know with a bit of disposable income tend yeah. to congregate um so you know i'd, I'd say south manchester is a perfectly perfectly yeah. safe welcoming place but you know 
that's partly because I'm, you know, I know it well, and so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I understand absolutely. it. I think if you m- move to a place that you don't know, mm. and one suburb looks like another, how are you going to be able to tell the mm. difference? Mm. And I think, I think, yeah, I think it's the kind of thing you pick up over time. It's not the kind yeah. of thing you yeah. just sort of walk into and then go, you know, oh, this corner shop had a pride flag in the window. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although absolutely. our curry house does have a pride flag in the window. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for our listeners, Gay Village is on Canal. It's on Canal Street. Yeah, it's um by Canal, oh, yeah. <laughs> given the name. And I think one of my favorite things is like two a.m. walking down the Canal Street, and there's just like twenty drag queens yeah. and kings just like stood outside their respective bars, being like, "You look amazing. Come into my bar." <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <for> the- <laughs> no, but you look so, so good. good. Yeah. Um, and I think that's such a sweet. And, yeah. and cool thing like I, I would have never had that back home and I love my home but mm. I think it's such a unique Manchester thing that yeah. is quite nice I love when they start chasing you saying free shots free shots <laughs> yeah, free, free shots, shots. <laughs> they start running after you yeah um, I've also I have done like a, a bit of theatre work throughout the city and we've done a lot of work at Salford and we did a, like a, a queer cabaret mm. performance um, a few weeks ago and it was it was a lot of students, but there were a bunch of people who came to support like our theater company, and they're just like, yeah, it's a queer cabaret. Like we we see those, and like we always make time for it. And so I think that's yeah. I think it's cool. Like there's there's the student community, but I think there's also like a community outside of that, mm. which is which is really nice to yeah. to see. Um, lovely. Another great segue, uh, <laughs> talking <laughs> about Manchester and kind of our experiences in these places is. How much do you feel like you belong in Manchester? Well, I'm from here. So, <laughs> um, so not at all. Well, they're not really allowed to kick me out. <laughs> uh, they're stuck with me, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I mean, as I said before, I've lived other places and I was down in London for 10 years working down there as a graduate and doing mm. all sorts of stuff. And what you were saying about the village before, actually, mm. is something I've never really explicitly thought about. But yeah. London is a huge city and it's great. And I yeah. really love living there. Mm. But because it's a huge city, yeah. everything is so spread around mm. and everything is kind of you need to know where you're going before mm. you go to something. Yeah. You don't just trip across a student queer cabaret <laughs> in a bar. On yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not how it works. And yeah. I think what I really like about Manchester is because it kind of fits in that middle size between a small city and a large city mm. that you can just trip across this sort of stuff in the course of oh yeah of daily life and i think to go back to the question i think that kind of makes people feel a little bit more included and a little bit more welcome in yeah. a place or can do i mean mm. you know it's it's it depends who you meet and who you know mm. but um I found it, when I moved back to Manchester, I found it a lot easier to meet people and make friends through various societies, through various sort of sports clubs and things that were going on in the university and outside it than I did when I first moved to London. And so I think that's, you know, having gone away and come back, that's something that it really strikes Mm -hmm. me that it sort of, it, it kind of kind of hugs you whether you want it to or not. Um, yeah yeah absolutely i get what you mean though by like manchester is kind of like a mini london it Mm. has a lot of things that like a lot of the like really big cities like london has Mm. but compressed Mm. which makes it a lot better because everything's close by and things like that especially if you live near the center and like if you're looking for like exclusive unique quirky experiences I'm pretty sure they have everything. Like, <laughs> you go on Eventbrite, you can find any kind yeah. of a Brite Every event. Like, event yeah, ever, like, yeah. Like, it has a lot of those things, but without the, like, the aspect of London, which you have to travel, like, three hours to get from one side of London to the other, <laughs> like... <laughs> there was this, um... For my birthday, I went to a tea house that was Alice in Wonderland themed, mm. which was, first of all, mm. incredible. And it was, like, this very prim and proper and, like, oh, tea and sandwiches. Mm. And then um, every single night at about nine, they turn it into like an Alice in Wonderland drag show <laughs> where they like recreate Alice in Wonderland, but with like a bunch of drag kings yeah. and que- queens. And I was like, this is, yep, this is Manchester. <laughs> like <laughs> that <laughs> is Manchester. Yeah. Like, I, I, I definitely agree with like the whole, um, it being so a little bit smaller is what like encourages more community because people are close to each other. Mm. Um, like, I don't know if it's just me not knowing things, but especially, like, back home, it's, like, nothing really happens or is, like, if it does happen, it's not 
as open or as easy to access mm. whereas in manchester everything's just like this is happening right now yeah and you're there right now it's very connected all, yeah yeah mm. i think there's a there's a, a greater sense of, of of community and people talking to each other and um about the times everyone is uh, more welcome to things than they aren't yeah yeah. yeah i think it definitely has a lot of diversity mm. that's my favorite thing about the city and i feel i think that's one of the reasons i felt so like such a great sense of belonging yeah. in the city is because of the like wide diversity of people like you find people from all over the world who identify in all different ways like it's just i think amazing mm. to be in a city where you can see so many different people really i'm gonna ask this question because i'm just genuinely curious um has anyone gone to Manchester Pride or like other Pride events? Do you know how it differs? Because for me, I've gone to Denver Pride, which is like mm. kind of in a park and it's really fun and there's a bunch of vendors. And then last year, I didn't go to the actual festival, but we were there for like the days lead up and it was like 10 by 10 mm. blocks. Everything was shut down and there were just so many people decorating everything, like oh. painting the ground and like giant floats were put up throughout like every store. And it was like, this is magical. <laughs> I am in the gay village. I love it. Yeah. I mean, as a local, I've, I've been a, many times. Amazing. But it's sort of, Pride is supposed to be Friday to sun, uh, Monday. Mm. And it sort of sweat spreads out. <laughs> <laughs> so really? like, Never ends. Uh, wait, I, like, I think last, I mean, I, I don't go out as much as I used to. I'm trying to live a more healthy, you know, healthy mm, lifestyle. Very PhD of you. Um, but all indeed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, it sort of, you know, Tuesday before, Wednesday before, there's stuff going on. Yeah. Like, Thursday before, the village is just full of people. Like, and then on the Monday of Pride, which is, you know, the vigil and, mm. you know, the sort of more serious side of it. And then all the people who've been working all weekend are out after that because they want to have fun too. Yeah. It can go on for like a yeah. week. Yeah. And people, you know, come from all over the country. Like, mm. and it just, it sort of transforms the city into a very weird place. Like, a good <laughs> place, but a very very weird very place. expressive yeah uh, because it's all sort of con concentrated mm. but as you say it's in within like 10 blocks of the yeah, city of just it's pure of just pride <laughs> yeah and yeah um and I, I think think like one thing about manchester that i think if you've not been here like probably people aren't necessarily aware of there's quite a it's quite a poor city mm. relative to a lot of places yeah and it's quite a working class city relative Absolutely. to a lot of places yeah, and at Pride, like, it's the whole city sort yeah. of is sucked into into those three streets. This gay vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you'll you'll be there with your friends and your boyfriend and, you know, yeah. whatever. And then you'll see Sharon and Yvette from The Office, who <laughs> the job you worked at three years ago, because <laughs> Yvette's niece is a lesbian and she wanted to come and support her. And, you know, it, and they brought their kids and then they're, yeah. you know, and it's it's such a, it, it allows you to see a different side mm. of the city that you wouldn't Absolutely. necessarily see being in university or working for a professional job or something like that. Mm. It's a, it's a really, I find it a really interesting experience. Oh yeah, know? absolutely. Um, and you know, one I enjoy, but it's, it, yeah. Mm. A little bit of an odd one sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I've yeah. never been to a Pride event. <laughs> we could change that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it happen. But no, I do want to go to one of the Manchester ones. I'm just not free this year. <laughs> so. It's okay. We'll just get you there next year. Does Darlington have a Pride? Mm, yeah, but it's not really like... <laughs> 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 it's not Manchester. Uh, I like that Manchester has a quite protected Pride and that you have to buy tickets and you have to think... Like, yeah. Yeah, they have it all gated off because then that stops, like like homophobic people just walking down the street who yeah. might, I don't know, interact with people negatively. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are some prides in smaller towns that they're not boxed off, they're just yeah. on this open mm -hmm. street and then people are getting slurs shouted at them and things just for like being at pride. Yeah. So I like, I kind of like that they like boxing off the city. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But I have heard it's like 60 pounds to go in. That <laughs> is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that yeah. feels homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, I'm kind of yeah. jumping back to a previous question on like, how much you feel you belong in Manchester. Mm. And I think I'm very lucky that I grew up in a place that was quite, like the community was quite comfortable with it. But I was never, I would never describe myself except like in secret. I'd be like, guys, I'm all weird. Like yeah. it's a secret, you can't <laughs> tell anyone. But, and I think this is with growing up as well and you know, going off to uni. But when I got to Manchester, I was very like, hello, <laughs> yeah. hello world. And I think 
the city like the community that we have itself it's very open like majority of the people I know and this is again like environments you surround yourself in but majority of the people in my first year dorm like everyone I know is queer yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome yeah interestingly enough like going back to what we were talking about towns outside Manchester like when I, I didn't grow up in the city I grew up in a suburb called Sale which is yeah like what four or five miles outside mm. like the center I don't know I don't, yeah. I don't know I've only <laughs> lived there 20 years um <laughs> but when I was a kid, there was nothing for, like, you know, there were gays in Manchester. Yeah. But, there, you know, nothing outside that. But now Trafford has a pride in sales. Stockport has a pride in mm. Stockport. Yeah. Oldham has one. Bolton, I think, has one now. Like, I think as Manchester has changed, it's pushing that out oh, into yeah. other places. Spreading the gay And spreading yeah. the gay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, that's, I think that would have made a huge difference to me if I was, like, you know, 13, 14 and living yeah. in oh, sale yeah. and like suddenly that world rocks up to my, mm. you know, civic centre. Mm. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's something you don't get in a lot of places. And I, I'm really interested to see how that will develop because yeah. hopefully it will keep sort of building and, you know, mm. as I mean, I've got lots of LGBT friends who live in places like Stockport and Trafford because they don't want to pay Manchester house prices. <laughs> um, Real. But... It'll be interesting to see how, as those places change, whether like that sort of thing becomes more more widespread and more you know more accepted mm. because you know make the whole city like 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 the mm. centre. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 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 No. I, yeah. I definitely agree. I, what I like about Manchester is that it's like it's normalised, not just accepted. Mm. So yeah. like, there's a difference mm. between the two. Like, because say in like my city, like when it, where I came out, it wasn't really normalised. It was accepted. So when I came out, people were like oh yeah yeah we're totally cool with you but they'd still like they'd, it would be like he's the gay person do you get what i mean mm. it wouldn't be like yeah. the gay he's the person who, yeah exactly yeah. it wouldn't be he's the person who really likes environmental science and sustainability it would be or the he's gay the person one. who's doing <laughs> taekwondo it yeah. would be he's the the gay person and people yeah. would like that would be how you are identified mm -hmm. whereas i feel a lot more in manchester like especially since i've come like i feel much more protected here because it's normalized like when i first rocked up to union like told them they're like cool yeah okay we'll carry on like yeah. carried on cooking i was like oh they didn't go no. they didn't like react i was like worried i was like what they didn't say what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> i mean i think that's a process like that people go through yeah. yeah but also that places go through like like when i when i got married like my gran who has sadly died now but was in her mid 90s and she mm. was starting to have some dementia but you know and she wasn't she was a you know conservative mm. christian yeah. woman um of a certain age you know mm. who wasn't necessarily all right with the gay thing yeah and but she kind of came around to it and she's like i accept you and she wanted to meet my now husband um mm. and she did and then she came along and she said to me after after the you know the service she said christopher that was a lovely service I mean, it wasn't a real service, but it was a lovely <laughs> service. Oh, no. <laughs> and then I looked at her, like, and she went, and she went, I mean, it wasn't in a church, was it? And that's the only problem oh. she had with it. Oh. Because, but it took her, a, you know, yeah. a period of time to get from acceptance to, you know, to normalisation. Yeah. But she got there. By the end, you know, she got there. And I think... Places like Manchester can sort of show, mm. and communities like there's there at the university show that this process is open to anybody. Like, yeah. You know, you meet a gay person, you meet a trans person, and you realise we're just like anybody else. But yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Oh Who would have thought? Yeah. Do you know what I think the best thing is that, like, going back to the thing I said about diversity before, <laughs> is you find people who identify in really unique ways. For example, like, when I came out, I struggled a lot with religion because, um, mm. like, my family's all Muslim. Um, and it was very difficult for me mm. to like felt like I had to pick between the two felt like I could not be both um, but like you find here there's so many groups there's like the queer Muslim project there's so many like groups that like identify with like really specific identities yeah. as well which I found really great like to come to a city where you can find people like that because I can tell you where I'm from there's literally probably not anyone who identifies as specifically gay and probably Muslim mm -hmm. my best well, this is a working experience, so it's not particularly university related, but sort of developing that yeah. theme. Like my best experience 
I used to work for the CPS, which is the Pro Government Prosecution Office, mm -hmm. um, doing equalities work. So, you know, going out to community events and telling people about what to do if you remove a victim of a hate crime and stuff. Yeah. And we went to Sparkle, which is the um, transgender festival that happens in Manchester in July. Mm. Um, and, you know, and we, we, got to lot, we went to lots of these events in this job. You know, we went to the Mella and, you know, talked to people from various Asian backgrounds. We went to uh, the Caribbean Carnival and, you know. So we'd done this. We'd done this a lot, but we'd never been to Sparkle before because it was yeah. a smaller yeah. event and we weren't, you know. And we went along and we met so many different people with so many different mm -hmm. experiences yeah. that nobody in our, you know, organisation had ever come across before mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. because they're so unique and specific yeah. experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think having that kind of specific event or specific group of people... Yeah. And being able to find somewhere that feels a bit more like home for whoever you are mm -hmm. is really important for yeah. people, especially like if you know, yeah, if you're not, you know, I am a white gay man, but who is from Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> I fit, in, you know, I fit in pretty much pretty well. But yeah. the man in Manchester, the man in, the man I am in the man in Manchester. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really nice that you know I've got like um, gay, f well, gay male friends particularly, but from all over the world who you know live in manchester mm. and have you know friends from back home who also live in manchester and you know it's not not just a place where you're you feel like you're the only the only version yeah. of you you've yeah, got somewhere exactly, yeah. you've got people who can feel you feel some commonality with and feels and i think that's yeah in really I, important to I, people, I really you know. feel that like being trans um in high school and whatever you're gonna you're gonna come out and you're gonna get talked to by the staff members and they're gonna be like okay well you know we, we've 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 dealt with this before uh, so we know what we're doing and it's just like they there's been at least one yeah. other trans person before so they think they're all knowledgeable and whatever but it's never enough and it's always slightly off-putting and they're always talking down to you as if you're well, you are a child, but mm. like uh, talking down to you as if you don't know like your own experiences. Oh yeah. But then going to Manchester, where like everyone seems to have an experience with other like um, other queer people, and particularly with the university, mm. who have obviously had to have dealt with other trans people before. It it does kind of it makes me feel a lot more normal. Yeah. Like. I I just had to email someone and be like, oh, can I just change my name on the system? I haven't legally changed it. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, email, <laughs> Literally email us back when it, if you need help with changing oh, it. Oh, like, that's wonderful. I, I emailed them last year to change it. That was all fine. And then I emailed him like two months ago and it was just like, yeah, that's all done for you. Oh, like, amazing. Like, fantastic. Did you face issues with uh, like blackboard and things like that? Because I know a lot of trans students <sighs> were facing issues with that. Yeah, it happens like every now and then. I, I, mm. I um, my main issues with it at first, um, so I've, I've been using like uh, my name now since since I actually came to the uni in like September 2022. Yeah. Um, legally changed it two months ago to that. Um, the on most of the issues is that when they had the paper registers, yeah, they still yeah. have that now and then. The name wouldn't match up sometimes. Yeah. Um, and there is issues with. Uh, changing your email and things like that. Yeah. Like I still haven't done that. Um, you can't really do it through the IT website, which I think it's quite... It's a little bit inaccessible because I don't have the time to go mm. in person and be like, hey, can you please change my email for me when yeah. other people can do it themselves. But it seems to only be accessible to postgraduate students to be able to change the emails, Yeah, even though it's just like making a new account and then rerouting the emails through mm. it. There, there are a lot like uh, other issues with that. I know um, some of my friends have experienced it where uh, like the lecturers have sort of outed them um, mm. through like the paper registers or yeah. like um, having to write down the email with their birth name on, even though like it uses their chosen name. Yeah. Yeah. So th I, I think there, are, there definitely is like room for improvement, but like, yeah. largely for myself, it's been quite, 
acceptance and yeah and that's yeah. i think that's really helpful for mm. people as well like i think it's good to know that and i think that happens in a lot of universities um where it's kind of like the fight with yeah. with it and i i don't go by my birth name either mm. so even though it's like i don't know names are weird and like i yeah. i never like being i've never liked my my birth name and I've never, I honestly got like, the, I have ADHD. Like there is, there is no way you will find me sending an email on time. And I, I'm like, this is my third year and I've still have never ever messaged the IT department and be like, please change it. Um, but I have like, I've just signed my emails out with like my name and all of, and I think I'm very like the arts department. There's so much overlap in like queer yeah. expression and artistic expression. Um, but all of my teachers have been very like, right, sorry. And like yeah, they check it off, my, which my, is which my is lecturers nice. have been always been quite nice, uh, even though like um, it is a thing in archaeology where basically everyone is like a white, mm. old straight man. Mm. Um, but everyone does seem to be like on the ball with it, at least, which is obviously very appreciative. Yeah, it's just like some people are like <laughs> not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna jump into our final question. Um, our views and perception of the LGBTQ community improving? And what has your experience been like in that? I think so, personally, mm. especially at university, if we're talking from a university mm. perspective. Yeah. Because um, if you look like you were talking about like previous like high schools and secondary yeah. schools and things, mm. they're not doing so well. But if you look at university, it's doing much better. And all those people had to have came from secondary schools and high schools yeah and like people joke like oh there's way more gay people at university but that's not the case there's just people who feel accepted yeah, to come who out actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um, so it's one of those things where i think like it, it'll trickle down and like mm -hmm. it'll help to get to secondary schools and primary schools and things like that but mm -hmm. yeah. i think in terms of progression and like things getting better i think it's starting at the top and it's kind of filtering mm -hmm. its way down mm -hmm. to the lower levels but it's obviously going to be better at universities than it is in lower levels of education. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> over my lifetime, I've got to sound like a 60 year old sometimes. Um, <laughs> like, Who knows? Back when, I was, when I was your age, I think, it ha I think over the last 20 years, that certainly things have changed a lot. I don't want to say it become easier because I don't think, I think that's quite yeah. condescending. What I mean is, or what I want to say is that I think like it's become people have sort of moved further through that process of acceptance mm. to celebration and mm. inclusion and, you know. Um, it's actually something to be proud of. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I I mean, I get asked stupid questions <laughs> less yeah. um, than I used to. Mm. Um, I remember like there was a job that I worked in a few, about five years ago before I started mm -hmm. my PhD. And I'd not been married long and I was talking about my husband and there was a lady there who was very nice, but just a little bit, bit reactionary. And she kept saying, partner. Mm. No, my, my husband, she went, your partner. <laughs> and, <No. laughs> and it was one of those situations where it's like, oh, I've not had this for a while. This yeah. is, this, this is, is not, new, it's this, exciting. This is new, yeah. Well, it's yeah. not new, it's, this no. is just, this is, this is fun. Um, but I think it, it seems, from my, from my perspective, yeah, I mean, but as, you know, my perspective is the perspective of a, you know, middle-aged white man <laughs> from Manchester. <laughs> um, you know, I and and a fairly bolshy one at that. Mm. Like, I think I think it is. Well, I, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, mm. but like, it's very different depending on who you are and yeah. what circumstances you're in. And I think sometimes we can. People like me can think, oh, it's great. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine for me. Everything's working out really well. And not think about people who are younger, people who yeah. are still in like secondary education, people yeah. who are trans, mm -hmm. people who are still living in smaller towns. Like I think it's getting better, but it doesn't it's, mean it's getting it's better. To forget the people who are, yeah, who are yeah. in those places. Yeah. I think what you said earlier, like really hit it on like, it's very normalized here. Like it's, what yeah. did you say? Normalized or yeah, yeah, normalized versus because yeah. there's a difference between normalized and accepting. Acceptance. Yeah, and tolerance. I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah tolerating versus normalizing. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think I think that's so accurate. And I think you like it. It does. I think trickle down a bit. I directed a show this semester, um, and it was like a musical. 
guys. I guess have a, th- a theme in my life of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Drama um, student. <laughs> who would have guessed? Um, and one of my like pitches when you do the show, so you like send it off to the society, mm. and then the society, like the committee, will decide what show fits within the program. And I submitted this show called Alice by Heart, and it's very queer coded. And there's a lot of characters that can be drag kings or queens. Yeah. And that was like what I wanted to do when mm-hmm. I put on the show. And I was like, please, yeah. like, I think this is the target demographic. And I, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because you never know, like, what the uni will back up. And then they were so excited for the show and it went really well. And people came to see it because so much of the crew and so much of the cast were queer yeah. and we were just kind of making yeah. this like extraordinarily camp production yeah, that's and it was that's cool that like we got money to do it and like the university supported it also not to shout out um our <laughs> producer here i think a lot of universities <laughs> we love you harry um a lot of universities will kind of like put up the the obviously downloaded safari like google page of like a flag yeah. and they're like happy pride month yeah. but i think it's i think it's really special to have something like this going something on. like this yeah, where we just exactly. get to talk yeah. about like our actual experiences um and not be filtered yeah to an extent yeah edited slightly <laughs> but not filtered um i think as a country like the society itself like the people we are progressing towards a much more progressive society yeah than we were yeah However, I feel like the government is going in the opposite direction. Yeah. 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 Which is which is what's very strange to me as I feel like living in a country where I feel like I meet more and more people who are more accepting, mm. but I feel like the government seems to be undoing all its good actions, yeah. <laughs> which is very confusing. It's it is becoming more and more prominent that um the minority of voices as Mm. in people who are transphobic and homophobic are having their voices amplified because of the likes of social media and things like that Mm. so going online online is very hostile and horrible and blah 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 and that's that can sway some people's opinion into thinking that like the 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 current society is all awful but that's not true Mm. the majority of people i meet and know are accepting i mean my dad is still kind of like I love you, but yeah, you know, but not like in in a, like a really. But he'll just make a few like off color jokes, but that's yeah. like yeah. you know, <laughs> that's dad. What what do you expect? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's obviously fine with me. Um, but with politicians, it's like it 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 just feels so. It's really demoralizing. Mm. Um, when everyone around you seems to accept you but the people who are supposed to be you know what's the word like the ones who are legally supposed yeah to who are yeah. supposed to be caring for you don't mm. yeah. like they're not very representative no, of society i like, think that's one thing especially like with student life here is and it, with this student life anywhere but you can really create mm. a bubble and manchester so is different. like yeah. manchester yeah. is such a mm-hmm. strong community mm-hmm. And there is a bubble, especially like with student life of yeah. like, there's so many protests, there's so many yeah. marches happening on campus all the time mm-hmm. that it, it like when I'm on campus, I feel really, really yeah. safe and I feel so supported go home and like, like, yeah. And then there's oh. so many different experiences like going home and like not necessarily having that same community that I think is, yeah, it's very fascinating. Yeah. I mean, one thing I would say is that the reason, you know, the, the reason that this is politically salient yeah. is because because the kind of activities that, you know, that have become more common, mm-hmm. that, you know, to make sure that, you know, gay people and lesbian people and trans people, you know, feel included, make some people very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And, but the f- it's, it's because of that increased visibility, because of the, you know, increased provision mm-hmm. that some people are reacting to that. And... It, it's awful to be within and exist within, but you still have, you know, Community, the reason they're trying yeah. to stop things like, um, you know, equality policies mm. and why they're trying to stop things like trans inclusion in the yeah. NHS is because those organisations have pushed yeah. for inclusion because they see the value and use f- of it for Absolutely. trans people or gay people or whatever. Mm. Yeah. And they're not reacting to nothing, they're reacting to success. Yes. And... The only way 
to really fight against that is to keep being successful. Yeah, so absolutely. find your community, mm. d- do your activity, like have your protests, mm. form your own life and live your own life as best yeah. as you can yeah. because that's what they don't want you to do. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't want you to be happy because it's their discomfort. Yeah. But your, their discomfort is not your issue or my mm. issue or anybody's issue. Yeah, it's their issue. Absolutely. And so keep doing what you're doing because that's the only way to win. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was honestly. That was very inspiring. <laughs> was, it deserves an applause. <laughs> I, honest, I feel like that. <laughs> We're done. That was it. That's how you end the episode. That's how you start the episode. Stream brat. <laughs> Should we do? Um, let's end the episode maybe with like our favorite place to go that celebrates queerness. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna go back to it. If you are looking for a good night out, if you're looking for a fun weekend, go to Gay Village and. Go and have fun. Okay, honestly, any place you go in, but I will say McTucky's has the (laughs) best garlic fries at four in the morning, (laughs) and that is queer culture. And that's my recommendation. No, I don't know. (laughs) I love a garlic fry. Like, I get home and I smell of garlic, and I wake up the next morning oozing garlic. That is my night out, is that you have to go to Gay Village and do it. I triple dog dare everyone on the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> any other I recommendations in the morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm i'm usually in bed by eight so <laughs> you do it once and then you never have to do it again <laughs> my favorite place is probably brewers mm. if you heard of filthy gorgeous we love filthy gorgeous <laughs> yeah that's probably it's a student night it's a student what, is, what happens at, at filthy gorgeous for the viewers the, that might not oh, know it's a it's a nice little club in a basement <laughs> very nice <laughs> very manchester um, but chic. Yeah, chic. chic little basement look as you trip down the stairs on your way in. <laughs> um but they have a drag show on in the middle of the club with like you just bouncing up and down to like just dance by lady gaga <laughs> and then just dance. it'll be okay <laughs> and, and then like boom the drag yeah. queen comes out yeah she like, just comes on and then they, they do themes my favorite thing about it is they do themes every week yeah um and they have they had an Alice in Wonderland theme. They once. did. They <laughs> did. <laughs> I didn't, but I did uh, see the pictures. Yeah, but they have themes every week. I really liked. They always I never actually went, but I, I always look at the pictures. Mm. Yeah. Yes, is really good. It's not. I mean, it is kind of queer, but it's just people having drinks and there's pizza. Yeah. And that is, is that the one next to the factory? Mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, it's really nice. Lovely. Um, just a bit of a change of pace, because you know, as I said, I'm very. No, we old. need that. We need um, that. The um, queer lit book, queer lit bookshop and <gasps> coffee bar oh, yes. on Great Ancoat Street is a lovely little space. Um, is a bookshop, obviously, it sells all your LGBTQ plus reading material mm. and bookmarks and yes. pin badges and things. But it's also got a little bar and a coffee shop, and you can just sit and watch the world go by. And like, and it's wonderful, mm. and it's lovely. And it's all like queer stories inside. Yeah. I definitely want more like uh, places like that, like bookshops and cafes, yeah. like queer related mm-hmm. ones. They do have a good amount, but mm-hmm. it would be I nice to see more. Like, it's like I feel like people need to n- realize gay culture isn't always clubbing mm-hmm. and drinking on Canal Street. Like, <laughs> <you know. laughs> There's also I'll give you one more if <laughs> McTucky's is not the vibe. <laughs> um, I love. Like, there's a social media presence in Manchester of, mm-hmm. like, cabaret performers who own, like, tiny little shops. And one of my favorite is Beg, Borrow, Steal. And it's, like, a vintage Beg, little store. Beg, yeah. Yeah. Y- same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, all the, the people that work there are all, like, amazing cabaret performers. And then during That's the really day, cool. they just, like, sell vintage clothes. And I'm just, like, that. This is where I want to be. They're fantastic. I, I love I that. I follow them on Vinted. Oh, yeah. 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 I follow their Instagram. And it's top tier content. Well, if we don't have any more suggestions, any final mm. thoughts on being I like being gay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think more Thank people you guys should for do listening. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come and find us. Come get our autographs. We will be at Filthy Gorgeous in the <laughs> bookshops in McTucky's at 4 a.m. Um, drinking iced coffee and drinking iced coffee together. Um, lovely. Well, mm. this was this was Manchester Voices. 
Yeah. Should we all do like a we are the thank you guys voices. for listening? Thank you. We're waving <laughs> if Wait. you're if you're listening in, yeah. but we're all waving. <laughs> <laughs>